When it comes to movie remakes, I'm a little bit skeptical about them. But the movies that I actually do accept being remade are the ones where its story is so original, but also it has full of potential that it could live up to its hype. But it does come a little bit short due, due to the fact of filmmaking decision flaws. But then we get talented filmmakers to come in and fix those past mistakes and become far better than it was in its past predecessor. Then we have films that are nearly perfect that it's almost completely impossible to remake, yet Hollywood still likes to recreate the same story, hoping that they could recapture the same impact as what the original film did. But we can all agree that pretty much didn't work and just plainly sucked. So the latest remake to come out within the past two months is none other than the, than the film that is based off the popular Broadway production of West Side Story. Now, if you're not familiar with this story, the setting pretty much takes place in the 1950s west side of Manhattan, where there's a rivalry between two gangs, the Jets and the Sharks. The Jets being the white and Polish descent, while the Sharks being Puerto Rican immigrants. And the film is centered around Tony and Maria as his two star-crossed lovers, one being a member of the Jets and the other being the sister of the Sharks' leader, as they try to be together while both of their sides are at war. So what you saw at the very beginning of that intro was kind of like the way how I really thought about the beginning of West Side Story. How can you pull that off? A timeless classic movie of, of winning 10 Academy Awards, including Best Picture. Now, don't get me wrong, the movie is not perfect. It really does have its flaws. And there are some things that really don't work well anymore, considering the fact that we had not Hispanic actors playing Hispanics and then they were painted brown. They had the stereotypes and also there was some cheesiness and it's not close to the source material. But like I said, it is a timeless classic. I do appreciate the film for what it was at the time, but I do think that there were some things that could be fixed about it. And consider the fact that I do come from a theater world that's done so much acting in high school and college, either it's within the play or within the musical. West Side Story is one of my favorite Broadway shows of all time. And considering the fact that you're having my favorite personal filmmaker of all time going at it and trying to do his own interpretation, I was like, you know, I'll be 50-50. I want to see how this goes, but I'm also nervous at the same time. Now, after coming out of the movie theaters three times, because yes, I actually did see this movie three times in theaters, I can shockingly say, while also processing everything, all I want to say is that not also is the 2021 version good. No, actually, no, it's not good. It's great. It is actually superior than the 1961 film. And it beats it in every category. Literally every category acting singing choreography story characters literally everything i really don't know how spielberg does it but this guy is the goat and he he literally pulled off the impossible which is this is kind of a little bit shocking though because i'm surprised that the movie bombed at the box office because this is literally one of the best films to come out in 2021 but then again some of the other best films of all time bombed at the box office so who who knows who knows? I can't sing, sorry. Now the entire cast of this film is great, but the ones that really stuck out was Ariana DeBose as Anita, which she definitely is gonna be deserving for a support, Best Supporting Actress, or at least for a nominee, I could just say that. But I'm also surprised that they're not giving enough credit to Mike Feist who played Riff as Tony's friend in the film because that man, Man, that, that guy can sing, act, dance. He is a legit triple threat. And I just thought that, man, this guy's gonna go places and I can't wait to see more for what he does. The other thing that I appreciate about this film that what Spielberg did was that the fact that he used real Hispanic actors to play Hispanic characters. I'm like, thank you. But also for someone like me personally who comes from a Hispanic background and me, uh, yes, my last name is Hernandez and stuff, but I'm like, you know, I also like the fact that the culture was respected. It didn't feel stereotype. It didn't feel cheesy. It wasn't forced. It was just authentic and it was just true to itself. And I actually found that very touching for me also. Even the part where Spielberg's decision was to not have subtitles in the Spanish talking, because trust me, there is a lot of Spanish talking in here, but um, and a lot of people will be complaining about that. But the reason he didn't add subtitles was because he felt like had he put subtitles over the Spanish, he felt like he would have given the English more power. But because of that, he wanted to respect both cultures and treat it equally. He was like, yeah, we're not gonna put subtitles. And I was like, that's genius. And I know some people will be complaining, like saying like, well, what if we can't speak Spanish? You know, cause you know, we're not Spanish speakers. Well, guess what? I may be Hispanic, I don't speak Spanish. English is my first language. I only know a little bit of Spanish, but no, I'm like a very beginner. And 
you could um, you, you you could say, well, we're not going to know what, what they're going to say because it's a different language. But no, that's not true at all. Because in the film, because of the direction, uh, the film is able to pull off the way where if the person is talking Spanish, that you can still tell what they're saying based off of their body language, the tone, and the settings. That w so that is a really good direction right there, and I applaud for that. So you're actually going to be able to just understand everything completely. So it's not going to be a hassle. And the last thing I also applaud for this film is thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You did nostalgia right, because when you had the legendary Rita Moreno in the film, who, by the way, was also in the original West Side Story and won an Academy Award for playing Anita. She now plays Valentina, who is a completely original character written by Tony Kushner, which the screenplay is just fantastic. But the thing is, it wasn't just like a one-off thing. Legit, R Rita was in this film and she was a supporting character and she had a purpose of being in this film. I'm like, thank you. So I'm thinking like we have a actress that we appreciate from the old days, which is that's nostalgia, but it, it's just done right the way how they pull it off because it's not like they just grab some famous actress from the past and then just throw her in, in like, hey, what's up? I'm that one celebrity who was very famous from that original movie. So I'm just making a cameo doing a one liner. Nostalgia. No, not like that at all. Also, the film does really talk about a lot of strong subjects where there's involving hatred towards one another and racism. But yet, I do love that how it symbolizes where it says that when, when there's hatred, it divides us. But when there's love, it connects us all. And I think that's such a really strong subject because when I went to the theaters, I'm, I'm not going to point out names because, you know, I want to pay respects to having their privacy. But there, I was with these group of friends and one of the friends... Uh, their partner after the end of the movie they started crying in tears i'm like the director he did his job he really did and if the fact that you can make somebody cry at the end of the film it's just that's just really you know just how powerful this film is honestly if i had to complain about anything it would have to be ansel elgard's uh, singing a bit i thought at times he was a little weak don't get me wrong he's still good but compared to everybody else i think he was probably the weakest singer but to put everything to the side this movie is fantastic it is one of the best films to come out in 2021 i think it's actually one of spielberg's best films to come out in a long time and also i would have to admit it's one of my favorite musicals that i've ever seen in my life so i actually hope that the rest of y'all who are even not just theater kids i mean even just enjoy film and enjoy a good story i think that you should go out and watch this film and i mean I'm just taking this with a grain of salt. It It is released by Fox, but because Disney owns it, maybe it might come out on Disney+. Plus. I really don't know for sure, but if it does, I think you should check it out. So yeah, for that. So for the final score, I'm going to give West Side Story a 9.5 out of 10. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Look forward to more movie reviews to come along in the future. That was my only film review to come out in 2021. Did it? Was it? Well, at least a movie from 2021. The rest... Head on is pretty much going to be 2022. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe here to the channel for more content. Until then, I'll see you in the next video.